Hey everyone, welcome to this series on hand calculations. In this video, I'm going to be doing the second example problem using the PDD formalism. So we can start with a statement of the problem, and please take a minute or two to pause your video and read through the problem statement. So once again, I typically like to start off these calculations by writing down a few of the variables that are defined in the problem statement. So we have a reference dose, once again, of one centigrade per monitor unit. And in this instance, we are giving a desired dose rather than a monitor unit setting. And we need to calculate the monitor units. And we can do this by simply solving the general dose equation for the MU, uh, but otherwise everything else is the same. You just need to do a little bit of rearranging. The depth is 10 centimeters. We have an off-axis distance now of three centimeters. Our collimator field size is 10 by 15. Our blocked field size is 10 by 10, and we also need a tray factor because our block is a cerebin block. And since we have tertiary blocking in the form of a cerebin block in this problem, we are actually going to use that field size to define the phantom scatter factor and also our PDD value. So if you ever have two field sizes, one defined by the collimator and one defined by a block, you always use that block field size to define your PDD value and your phantom scatter value. And once again, our SSD is 100, which is the same as the reference condition, so there's no need to convert our PDD to, the, to a different SSD because we're in the same geometry. We also have a rectangular collimator field, and so we can calculate an equivalent square field size using the 4a over p equation, and we get an equivalent uh, collimator field size of 12, which we will use in our calculations. So now we can go to our general equation and write it down. So this is what the uh, equation looks like when you solve it for the monitor units. You have the desired dose in the numerator and then all of your factors that you need in the denominator. In this instance, we also include a tray factor and an off-axis ratio because we have a cerebin block and our calculation point is off-axis. And then in the bottom equation, I just you know plug in some of those values like SSD 100, field size at the surface 10, uh, the blocked field size at the surface is uh, 10 by 10, uh, the calculation depth is 10, the collimator equivalent square is 12, the block field size for the phantom scatter factor is 10, and then our tray factor, and then our off-axis ratio for depth, 10 centimeters, and off-axis distance of 3 centimeters. Now we can go ahead and draw it out again. So here's our reference condition. We're given that the LINAC is calibrated with 100 centimeter SSD, a 10 by 10 field at a depth of D max, which is 1.5 for a 6x beam. And now we can add in our scatter factors. So our collimator field size is going to be shifted to 12 centimeters which we can calculate using the equivalent square. And we also have a block to 10 by 10. So the, the outer triangle here is the collimator field size and the inner triangle is the blocked field size. And now we can shift our depth, which we do with the PDD term. So we use the PDD at 100 centimeter SSD for a 10 by 10 field, which is the block field size at a depth of 10. And that's what you see with uh, this sketch here. You can see our depth changes to 10 centimeters. Then we can apply our off-axis ratio so we can move three centimeters off-axis. And remember, it doesn't matter which direction we move off-axis, uh, but we include it um, in the calculation, which you see here. And of course, we include our tray. You can vaguely see our tray inserted in the beam there, and we account for that with the tray factor. Uh, so this is just a nice uh, illustration showing the perturbations we're making to this reference condition by applying all of these terms. And so now we can go to our trusty beam data to find all of the values that we need to perform this calculation. So our PDD for the field size, the block field size of 10 at a depth of 10 is equal to 66.9. We can easily find that in the table there. And then we can go to get our scatter factors. For the phantom scatter factor, we use field size 10 because it's, you use the blocked field for that. By definition, that is equal to 1. And for the collimator, we use 12 because that's our equivalent square field size for the collimator. And so we use 1.011 for the collimator scatter factor. And then we can go find our off-axis ratio. So we find our off-axis distance in the first column of 3. And then we go over to the off-axis ratio at the correct depth of 10 centimeters. And we see our off-axis ratio is 1.012. And we plug it all into the equation, uh, keeping into taking into account the tray factor of 0 0.977, which is given in the problem statement, and we get a MU setting of 299. 
And I always like to perform a little sanity check in my head. So I look at the denominator of the answer here and I say, does the PDD of 0.669 make sense? Well, we're at a depth of 10. So we're going to need to bump up monitor units in order to reach 200 centigrade at a depth of 10 relative to the reference condition. So yes, that makes sense. Does a collimator scatter of 1.011 make sense? Yes, because the collimators are uh, open wider with a 10 by 15 field, a 12 centimeter equivalent square field size. So you're getting more of a scatter contribution coming through. Uh, the phantom scatter factor of one makes sense because that's the reference condition. Tray factor is 0.977. Does that make sense? Yes, because the beam is being attenuated through the tray. So you need more monitor units to compensate for that. And then the off axis ratio also makes sense because the beam horns are present. And so you need less dose because of those, uh, or less monitor units because of those beam horns. So it's always good to do those sanity checks in your head just to make sure that your calculation makes sense and that the final answer you get uh, is something that is reasonable. Yeah, so that's another example, a little bit more involved than the first one. And it's just, it's good to, you know, work through these and kind of reason through them in your head and make sure that what you're doing makes sense. And this is gonna be it for the PDD formalism videos. And now we're gonna move on to the TMR formalism.